everybody. My name is Kim and I'm the happiest cook. Welcome to our second video. We hope you enjoyed our first one where we made Cantonese chicken. Super yummy. And we're having some more next week out of the freezer. Today we are making fish cakes. Think of crab cakes made with fish. Your choice. Anything from salmon to canned tuna, which is what we're using today. Fish cakes remind me of my dad. When I was growing up, he would use whatever he happened to catch that weekend. Catfish, flounder, even trout. The best thing was eating them hot out of the pan and then snacking on them the next day right out of the fridge. Super yum. Love fish cakes and they make great sandwiches. But enough talking. Let's get to cooking. Thanks for watching. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to chop up three green onions. I have four small little miniature sweet peppers, a medium onion, and an empty ball jar. The ball jar is actually a trick my dad taught me uh, watching him make um, fish cakes and he would always tell me honey don't forget to make sure you put the onions in a ball jar cover it with a piece of um, saran wrap and nuke it in the microwave and I always thought that was super weird and in time I learned that it softens the onions softens the peppers and it makes everything hold together a lot better when you're making the patties so that the onions don't make things fall apart. So, we are going to put our onions in here. Then we are going to seed and chop up our peppers. And like that. And then once we get all of these done, we're just going to chop them all up just like we did our, onion, our green onions. I don't know about you, but the smell of peppers, I love. Sweet peppers smell really good to me. So, all right. The really fun thing about making fish cakes is that Number one, you get to eat them hot out of the pan and burn your mouth, like I was saying before. But the other thing is that they freeze really well, so you can make up a huge batch and then um, just freeze them up in a bag, and it works really well. So, here are our onions, peppers, and everything all softened up. Really kind of cool. Be careful, this jar can get extremely hot, which I am going to grab one more pot holder so that I can handle this without too much trouble. So, here we have our peppers. And they are all softened. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, take our salmon, which I have two fillets that I seasoned and just baked in the oven till they were cut. Uh, seasonings that I always use are my blackening seasoning, my smoked paprika, some salt and pepper, that's it. Um, I'm going to add a small can of albacore tuna in water. You don't have to, it's just something I've always done. 
it just adds a, just a different little bit of a flavor to the fish cakes, which is pretty much that. So I squeezed out um, all the water. Not bone dry, but pretty much everything. So, all right. So we have our fish and our vegetables. Let's um, stir this up. All right, okay. So the next thing that we're going to add to this is about a half a cup of flour. And the reason we add flour is to act as a binding agent when everything is cooking. So we have about a half a cup of flour. Um, I use panko, panko in my fish cakes. My father used to use a tube of saltine crackers. So kind of your preference. I just happen to like panko because it makes the fish cake super crunchy when you cook them. And I am going to use about two cups of panko like that. And then the last thing we're going to add is our eggs. The reason we do them last is because the temperature's hot. I mean, it's not hot, hot, but you don't want to cook the eggs. You want to, you want to put them in and have them be raw. So, all right. So we're gonna crack three eggs. One, two, three. When you're cooking, I have learned to always crack your eggs into another dish and not directly into your food, so that. If by chance you have any shells, you can retrieve them. <laughs> so, we're going to put three eggs and stir that in. Um, sometimes if you're, um, when you're doing this, kind of check it for dryness. This has a really nice, it's nice moisture. It'll hold together really good. What you don't want is you don't want it so dry that when you go to make a patty, it falls apart. So, all right. So this is now ready to make into patties, which we will uh, come back and I'll have my pan out and we'll get ready to start cooking. All right, so we have our fish cake stuff all together. If it seems a little dry, you can always add a little milk um, to your mixture and it just kind of adds some moisture. If it's too wet, you can add a little bit more panko or even add in a little bit of flour. You want to be careful on the flour. You don't want it to become too cakey. So, all right, so this is how we do it. All right, so. This just kind of makes them all a little bit more uniform. I think we're getting close to cooking. What I do when I'm frying, I don't know what you do, is I pop a little something and it's ready. So, all right, so we are ready to start cooking. There's a little piece of fish I stuck in there just to see, and we'll start filling this pan with fish cakes.
So here's what they look like on the back. We're gonna just stack them up. All right, so here is our finished platter full of delicious, easy to make, very nutritious, yummy, yummy, and they're all ready to eat. You notice the two testers that I made are suspiciously missing because we have I already tasted them and they were really good. So I hope you enjoyed this. This, by the way, is considered one of the secret recipes from my grandma's recipes. My dad learned to make them from his mom and I learned to make them from my dad. So from our family to yours, enjoy.